Blog Talk Radio. To share with me this morning on March the 2nd in 2017, I have two guests from the Israel United in Christ, and that is Bishop Nathan Yale, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And I'm not going to try to pronounce the officer's name. I don't want to butcher anybody's name. But welcome. I'm so happy that you have been able to join me. Thank you, sister. Uh, I'm Bishop Nathaniel, and the officer's name is Masharatia. Masharatia. Okay. Masharatia. <laughs> uh, okay. And if I can, our website is um, www.israelunite.org. If anyone mm-hmm. wants to look us up well, for further information regarding us. I did look up your website. It's a beautiful website. Very informed oh. information. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. That. Mm-hmm. So today, um, we have till about 8.57 or 8.55 for you to tell us about what you've learned. You know, I was very enthralled to hear how you've taken the black history book, which I was, that's how it was named to me by my teachers, uh, and you literally show through scripture how it is related to African American people. And I would like for you to share that information with us this day, this time. Mm. Okay. Um, well, we have, I was just at the University of uh, FAMU in um, Tallahassee, Florida. Now, and who, who I, is this I, talking? Are you the bishop or? Okay, the great. Student. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was at FAMU, uh, um, Tallahassee, Florida, and I did a, a survey in the class. I had a classroom of about 50 students, and I asked each of them their nationality. And believe it or not, out of the 50 students, I got about 30 different answers, 30 different mm. answers. It was really amazing, from black to Afro-American to African-American to um, Negro to um, what is it, Haitian, Jamaican, uh, British, uh, Ghanaian. Everyone had a different nationality. And I began to show them, I went to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3, if, if the officer can get that for me, please. Can you say Isaiah 1? Chapter 1, verse 3. Okay. Officer, you there? Okay, I'll read it myself. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3, it reads, The ox knoweth his owner, and he asks his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. So, here in the Bible, the Most High compares the Israelites to two of the dumbest animals, but he said in relation to them, the as dumb as an ox and an ass is, they still know their owner, they still know where they belong, so forth and so on. He says, but the Israelites don't know. And they neither do they consider. So, are you still there? Hello? I'm here, yes. I'm listening. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you know what it the... made me remember looking at cowboy movies and a cowboy would lose his horse, but the horse always find his way back to his master. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, um... I, I, so I did that survey, which is a little examination we always do when I, when I open up a classroom, to show you how um, divided we have become. Many of us came on the same slave ships, but due to the traumatic psychosis of slavery, they divided us into various nationalities, they divided us into different languages, divided us into different religious practices and divided us into different political groups. This is the ultimate scheme on how they have destroyed us as a people. So, what I began to do, I asked them next, I asked, as, as I do with everyone, how many of you believe the Bible is the uh, ordained or divine word of God? Most of them said no. They said, we do not believe in the Bible. That book is a myth. It is a fairy tale. I said, okay, from there I will show you your history in this book. So, 
I went to Deuteronomy the 20th chapter, Deuteronomy 28, if everyone could follow along, this is when the tribes of Israel came out of bondage under the Egyptians by the hand of Moses. So, while we were in the wilderness of uh, Sinai, the Most High God told Moses to give the 12 tribes of Israel a message for us. And this is what he says, verse 15. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now he runs down a litany of curses, and I just want to hit some key points. I'll jump to verse 32. It says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine head. So then I ask, were our sons and daughters given unto another people during the transatlantic slave trade? They all have to acknowledge, yes, it happened to us. So then I said, did we have in our hands, did we have economic might or military might to unite our people again? No. No. We have no, no economic might. Then if we jump down to verse 37, it says, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So I said, that goes into your names being changed, your nationalities, your surnames, so forth and so on. A proverb and a byword. Uh, for example, uh, African American are two different names which come from two different locations. Like, for example, America is named after Amerigo Vespucci, which was a, an Italian navigator. Uh, I said, do we come from his lineage? Mm. No. You know. So uh, another term such as um, Haiti, which is an Indian word which means high, mo high mountain or it refers to Hades, which is hell. Uh, that's what Nick, um, what's his name, Napoleon called it, Hades. Uh, these names that they gave us were proverbs and byword. I said, even our last names, I said, think about your last name. Some of your last names are Wilson, some of them is Ray, some of them is Garnett, uh, some of them is the Young family. These names were the names the white man branded into the backs of our ancestors. We were identified by their names, okay? Like Nat Turner. His last name wasn't Turner. That was the family name of the white people that owned him. But still and yet, we have family reunions and we glorify these names. These are not our names. Neither are these our national identities. So then we jump down to verse 48, where Moses says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, meaning you got to serve your enemy for food, water, and clothing. Then it says, and in want of all things. That means anything you want, you got to get from your enemy, including toilet tissue, as low as that is. <laughs> toilet tissue toothpicks. from your enemy. We don't need no toothpicks. <laughs> exactly, all toothpicks. Thank you. <laughs> then he says, he says, and he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. So I ask everyone, during the transatlantic slave trade, did we have yokes of iron on our necks? Yes. No. The entire responded, yes. Okay. So then, finally, I jump down to the last verse, and I ask everyone, how did blacks get to the Americas, the Caribbean, the United Kingdom? Did we take planes there? Everyone responded, oh, no, historically, no. We came by ships. So I said, let's read Deuteronomy 28. 68, the last verse. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So I respond and explain to them, Egypt is a Greek word which means bondage. It's synonymous for bondage or captivity. So I'll read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. I said, oh, did we go into bondage with ships? Everyone responds, yes. Okay. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you got off those ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond women, and no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem you from your condition. So I said, well, we sold to our enemies once we got off the ships. Everyone responds, yes. So then I, I, I concluded with, so is the Bible a book of fiction, or is this reality? Is this facts what we just read? They all said 
facts. I said, okay. Henceforth, we must now look at the Bible with new eyes and mm -hmm. realize that the Bible is our history. The Bible is our records. It is not the records of the white man in Israel who calls himself Jewish. This does not, nothing we read fit him, nothing, nothing. It all fits us. So this proves that we are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Uh, okay. Then, uh, we're oh, okay. Go ahead, sister. No, I disagree <laughs> with you. Absolutely, it proves that you're right. Yes, yes. <laughs> All through the Bible, for example, color is mentioned. Everything, the Bible mentions everything from uh, marriage, marital relationships, how to keep a family together, uh, education, food, dietary law. The Bible is a guidebook for our people, which we have rejected. Every, all the time, many of our people reject it. We reject it. If I can, I'd like to read Isaiah 65 and verse 2. This is the problem with our people, and I can say it was my problem, because as I said on previous uh, shows, I went from being Christian to Kemetic to Islamic, and this was my problem, as is always our problem. Isaiah 65, verse 2. It reads, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. And this has been my problem from day one. This has been a problem of black people from city to city, state to state, country to country. We tend to walk after our own thoughts. And a white man, he's partially, partially, I'll say partially to blame, because he has taught black people to be individuals. When white people on a global scale work nationally, they work as a collective unit. We do not. This is why they, they have that slogan, divide them and conquer them, okay? We will always go after our own thoughts, never relying on the divine word of God. I have my own thoughts. This is why there's never unity amongst our people. Even with Farrakhan's famous Million Man March, you had a million black men, which I applaud him for what he attempted to do, but you had a million black men, all having different ideologies, different religions, different political groups, different identities. And what came of it? Nothing. We, had, we got a nice speech. We got a nice sermon. But at the end of the day, there was still no unification of our people. Why? Absolutely. Because we have to go back to what God says we are. We always go after our own thought. I want to be Kemetic. I want to be Baptist. I want to be Muslim. I want to be Moorish. I want to be this. Well, what does God say we are? <laughs> Christ said, I'm not sent, but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ was a black man. Most of us know that. But yet, yeah. until we deny, deny, we go after our own thoughts. This is what we do. This is why we fail time after time after time. And God never intervenes on our behalf. Because we never come to the realization that it's true and ultimate. Go ahead, sister. I'm sorry. I've been talking too much. I <laughs> know you're talking truth, and, and that's never too much. Um, I love the words of truth. And it's true. We, the unity, true unity comes when we are united under God's words and laws. Right. I mean, how are you going to unite on something else when, I mean, I, we can all agree that God knows what God is doing. Right? And only God. And that uh, we are created by God. And so we have our mandate. What we need to be doing is in relationship to the purpose for which God created us. Anything yeah. else is a deviation from truth. So, so I, go ahead. I'm with you. <laughs> now, the, one of the things, once we realize that the slave trade is biblically accurate, that it did happen to us. When we go to the book of First Kings, King Solomon prophesied about us going into slavery, and I'd like to, I'm going to read a key point that he says. Uh, First Kings chapter 8, and I think I'll start at verse 46, where it says, or he's talking about the Israelites, if he says, if they sin against thee, for, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be 
angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy far or near. Now, that far or near is very important because mm -hmm. the ones that were led away captive that are near to our homeland are our people, for example, in Liberia. They are closer okay. to the homeland. Mm -hmm. Our people in Ghana, our people along the West Coast. We, on the other hand, from the UK and America, are further away. So it says, uh, so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Now watch this. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive. That word bethink means to remember. We got to remember ourselves. Watch what he says. Let me read it again. Yet if they shall besink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. This is the point we don't want to come to now. We realize, yes, brother, we are in the land of our enemy. Yes. Okay, I bethink myself. I'm an Israelite. Yes, that's what God says we are. But then when he says, we have to, we have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, many of us go, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to come to that point because now I must speak truth to God about me, okay? This is what, this is the stumbling point with many of our people. Many of our brothers and sisters say, yes, we're Israel, but they don't want to give up the sins they live in. Why? Sin is fun. The uh -huh. Bible says that, Hebrews, it says sin is pleasurable. We like that thing. But now we must apply discipline to our lives, regardless of sin being fun. Adultery is fun. Sleeping with uh -huh. your neighbor's wife is fun. But uh -huh. evil, it is evil, dangerous, and God hates it. So now we have to repent, to think ourselves and say, you know what? I've sinned, I've committed wickedness, I am perverse. Okay, I speak to many brothers and sisters in the LGBT, uh, what does that stand for? Uh, oh, lust, Lesbian, guaranteed. gay, I, bisexual, uh, trans, transgender, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm going to look it up. Hey, I call it lust guarantees a booty tragedy. Quickly. That's the LGBTQ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our people... <laughs> Regardless of how good the sin feels, we must return to the Most High and repent and admit to Him we have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. we got to come out of those lives. Hey, crack, is, crack will make a crackhead feel good. But guess what? It's dangerous, evil, and deadly. We must come out of that, give up the crack, you know? We, gotta, we have to do what this Bible says. We must if we want salvation. Go ahead, sister. I'm sorry. Um, I understand we have a guest, uh, maybe somebody has a question for you right now, so I'm going to yeah. yield to that person. Okay. Um, good morning. Oh, praise God, praise God, giving honor to God, where all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding comes from. Uh, good morning, uh, my eager. Uh, good, good morning. Good morning to you, to your guest, Bishop Nathaniel, and Brother Marshall Rod, and beloved Naima. This is Brother MacArthur, and I was uh, really uh, pleased with your opening and uh, addressing the issue of trauma. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm listening to the, to, the, to the bishop address the connections that he's making to uh, the Bible and to history. But I would like him to speak to the present day issues uh, that you started off addressing when it speaks to dealing with the trauma and the present day trauma that all of that uh, the psychological damage and the spiritual damage that has been done to the soul and to the psyche of our present, our present day condition. Uh, how, uh, what, what, does, what does the spirit say to him? How do we speak to that today as you were addressing in the opening? You know, I think that's really apropos. That was one of the traumas I didn't list. The trauma that comes from disconnection from your source, that is a real trauma. Uh, Bishop, what do, you, what do you have to say about that? Okay, uh, well, that is traumatic, and this is what the Most High says regarding us. We've been 
disconnected, okay? Actually, I'll mm -hmm. start off with um, Psalms 83, if I can. I'll start there. Uh, because there's been a worldwide campaign to disconnect the black man and black woman from their source. And when I speak of our source, I'm referring to the biblical precepts. Uh, I'll read Psalms 83 in verse 2. I'll start from there. It reads, For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Amen. Israel may be brought in remembrance. So by cutting us off from our source, this is what they did. This is what the Bible is saying. Uh, let us cut them off from being a nation. This is what I started off discussing about the divide and conquer um, uh, guidelines that America and Europe, the European nations, as, long, as well as the Arab nations, uh, have done against us. By cutting us off from our source, it has led us down a slippery slope of individualists, uh, which has led us down the slope into homosexuality, crack addiction, um, wine abuse, um, uh, family abuse, dysfunctional families. This because the source cures all of these things if we apply the precepts to our lives. And I'm not saying it's easy, but we can do it. We can do it. Take mm -hmm. just a little bit of discipline. We can we can be healed virtually overnight if we apply the biblical precepts to our lives. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I totally agree. It's just, it's just like starting an exercise program after you've been sedentary for a long time. There's going to be some pain and distress. and But if you continue, mm -hmm. you will find that you will feel better, that you will breathe deeper, that your body will have less pain. And I myself had to disconnect from fornication and adultery in primary. That was, those were my issues. And, right. and, and did. And I feel wonderful. I really feel wonderful. I know that I'm under the grace of God because I'm in obedience to God's precepts. And I, 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 you know, I'm really concerned with, you know, like African-American males are just, uh, putting their spurns all over the place, you know, and, and have no regard for that. And to me, I, I, I see sperm as like gold. It's like they're throwing gold away. And, 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 and so they reap, they reap a bad harvest as a result of that. What do you think about that? Yes, um, you're absolutely right. Um, in uh, Isaiah 13 and 12, the Most High compares the the Israelite man, this is what he says. He says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Right now, society looks at the young African-American man as a criminalist, as a derelict, as a cartoon character. We are mm -hmm. not taken in the world at all. And that's because, once, once again, <laughs> we have not realized who we are and how far we have fallen as a people. We have not realized that thing yet, but we must. We must. We must. Okay? So you're right, sister. We, we have to. Uh, the Bible talks about marriage in Hebrews 13 and 4. He says, uh, God says, marriage what, is what, honorable. What, what, is this? what book is this? That was Hebrews 13 okay. and 4. Uh, okay. He okay. says, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, the young black male today does not realize that marriage is an honorable thing. Marriage means to take, you have a wife, you take care of that woman, you, you nurture her, you raise a family. When a young black man, he's not been taught that when you decide to have sex with a woman, you're saying you're ready for fatherhood, being a husband. Now, those husband and father go hand in hand when you deal with a woman, but they have not come to that realization yet. They, in Jamaica, they call it being a coxman. Have sex with as many women as you can, impregnate them, and don't take care of child one. And it goes from Jamaica to America. I just don't want to isolate Jamaica. <laughs> right, absolutely. You know? 
is yeah. very prevalent here in America and all over the world, Africa too. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, because of the colonialism uh, in Africa and other parts of the world, you know, that, that venom that of, of disobedience has been spread wide. Exactly. Do what you, you want to do. <laughs> Okay. And, I, and you do have a, a uh, caller who has a question okay. also. But, but okay. go ahead with what your next statement was. Okay, my next statement is that the Son of God, whom you know, in English we say Jesus Christ, we know in Hebrew it's Yahweh Shai or Yahshua. Okay. He made a profound statement regarding black men in the book of Luke chapter 7 and verse 31. Now, what he says is very pertinent. Watch what he says. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? Watch what he says. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, ye have not wept. Christ said the men of his generation, which is the men of our generation, are like children. I have witnessed older black men, 50, 60, with their pants below their butt, one pant leg rolled up, uh, bobo, bobos in their hair, walking with a bop, trying to follow children. You know, these young um. kids trying to travel when it should be the other way around. So Christ called us children, overgrown boys. America allows us to grow up, but America does not allow us to mature into manhood. But the Bible... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, what, that's what God requires of us, that we mature into yes. uh, manhood, male and female. And we yes. have yes. to be about that. So let's see what this caller has to say mm -hmm. or question or comment, okay? Good morning. I think this is Ms. Blower. Good morning. And you. And speak to our guest today. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good, good. Especially to our guest today, I'm really enjoying it. I was wondering why, um, what do you think about our foreparents who were not able to read or write and, and if they even looked at, at wanted to read a book, they, you know, had their leg cut off, their eye put out. How do you feel that uh, they made it uh, 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 as far as they did uh, during the slavery time, whereas the Bible was not even open to our people? And I mean, when I say our people, all generations and, and all denominations, we were uh, not allowed to, to read uh, Hebrews or Luke or what have you. So how do you feel that they made it as far as they did without the Bible? Mm, very good question. Well, yeah, I like that oh, question, too. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, the, um, when we read, uh, what verse is it? Let me get my thought together now. <laughs> Psalms 124, I'll read that. Psalms 124 and verse 1 and 2. This is the prophecy. It says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. The proud waters had gone over our soul. So, the Bible tells us that the Lord has always been on our side. Regardless of us not being able to read or write, our lack of education, he was always there with us, okay? And we see this evidence, here's the evidence, when you had such men as Denmark Vesey, okay, as Gabriel Prosser, as Matt Turner, Sojourn the Truth, Harriet Tubman. The Lord always put his spirit in certain men and women for that time, which was necessary to get us from point A to point B. Okay? So I don't want us to ever forget that the Lord was always there. But, watch this. So, many times people say, well, then why did he allow us to go through all this, this hardship? Because Moses warned us in Deuteronomy, as we read earlier, if you break God's commandments, all these curses will come upon you. We did not believe Moses, and sure, as the sky is blue, it came upon us. Now, Christ came on a scene and died for the nation of Israel. But watch what he also says. Uh, 
I believe it's Luke 19. Watch this. Watch what he says. Uh, bear with me a second. Or is it Luke? Let me look. Bear with me a second. Okay, it's Luke 21. Christ said this. This is when we read it, ran into Africa. I'm going to start above it. I'll, re, I'll start from verse 20. Luke 21 and verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, that's the Roman army he's making reference to, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. The mountains he's making reference to are the mountains of Africa. Okay? And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Then he says, and let not them that are in the countries enter in too. Don't come back to the land of Israel. Watch what he says. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So Christ is letting us know he didn't come to stop none of the prophetic word that Moses and the prophets gave. They had to come to pass because of our disobedience. His sacrifice for us was that, so that he could bring us back to the Father in these last days. That's what it was about. This is what most people don't realize. You know? Yes, because... Because this is the handiwork of God. God is showing through, through this book, the Holy Bible, that he is able to put us, allow us to go into bondage and then bring us out of bondage. That's how powerful yeah. God is. That's, and I wanted another scripture uh, related to when you can't read is the scripture that says, uh, Thy word have I hid in thy heart, that thou mayest not sin against me. And, mm -hmm. and there have been remnants of Christ's lineage that have that word awakened in their heart, that they know right from wrong, and they do what is good, in spite of, even during slavery time. Yep, yep, exactly. You know what's very uh, paramount about uh, our deliverance uh, when we read Jeremiah 16. Uh, we all know about the deliverance from Egypt. Watch the prophecy in Jeremiah 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. That's North America. The land of the north is North America. Then it says, um, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. That is a prophecy. But many of our people under the guise of Christianity, we don't want to leave this place. We are comfortable here in America. When the Bible says Christ is coming to save us, deliver us from this land, we were not brought here to prosper and stay. We were brought here to repent and return to our homeland. This is what our people don't realize. Everybody want to stay in America, Babylon the Great. This land is prophesied to be destroyed when you read Revelation 18. This is Babylon the Great. It is prophesied to be totally decimated, okay, by the European Union, which is the ten horns or the ten common markets. We must prepare are you ourselves saying for Europeans are going to turn against America? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you better believe it. The ten common markets, uh, the European Union, NATO, is going to turn on America and blast this place to hell and back. That's recorded in Revelation 17, 18 through 19. And that is when Christ makes his advent, his second coming, to deliver the Israelites from here. That's why this is going to be the greatest deliverance ever, you know. But we have grown cold here in America. We, have, we hear things like, your ancestors died for the right to vote. Vote for Hillary Clinton. No, 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 no. <laughs> we were not brought here to rise in democracy or republicanism. We were brought here to repent of our sins as Israelites, Return to the one true God. Watch, what, watch this. Watch this. I've been mm. talking too much. Let me... Isaiah 30. What don't the say that. About don't say you've been talking too much. Please don't say that. <laughs> I, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and verse 8. I'll start from there. Now go. Write it before them in a table and note it in a book. The book is 
making reference to is the Bible that we're reading. That it may be for the time forever and ever. Watch what he says about us. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That has always been our problem. We don't want to hear the law. No, I don't want to hear that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I don't want to hear that. Man shall not lie down with mankind as he does with womankind. I don't want to hear that. Okay? Remember the Sabbath day? I don't want to hear that. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Listen, brother. I don't want to hear that. This is us. I'm an individual. I do what I want to do. Think what I want to think. This is us. Watch what he goes on to say. Verse 10. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophet that prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the past. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Watch this. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you have despised this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. What is the oppression we trust in and stay thereon? The oppression we trust in is democracy. That has always been an, an institution, Republican, an oppressive institution. Politics itself is an oppressive institution, along with, watch this, Christianity. Oh, I said it. Somebody's mad right now. Somebody's mad, but it's okay. When I no, say Christianity, it's absolutely true. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's an oppressive institution because it is based upon white supremacy. You know, when I travel to uh, Brother Bishop, we got to go to yes. our last commercial break, and we'll be right back, and you can continue with that thought. Okay? Thank you. Yes, we're back. And, Bishop, uh, thank you so much for all of this wisdom and knowledge that that is coming from the Black History book, the Bible. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I have a question, but you were, you were talking about something before we went to break, and I want you to... Continue to elaborate on that, but then I'd like for you to ask, answer this question. What is the understanding of the tree of life? What is the tree of life? Okay. And the second <laughs> part, the second question is, if you can get to it, is what is meant by seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added? Okay. You got it. Okay. Okay. If I forget, just remind me. Okay. okay. Not a fit. And you with that thought in Isaiah 30, verse 12, where it says, Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, meaning our people generally reject the Bible, and trust in oppression. We trust in democracy and white man religions. Christianity is the right arm of white supremacy. Okay, uh, uh, Chris, the, the Christians as well, as well as the so-called Jews, they were paramount in the slave trade, as well as the Muslims. Mecca was one of the largest slave ports in the world. So it's amazing. So then another uh, oppressive thing, the uh, educational system, like with all these great black uh, leaders in Congress, none of them can help change the school curriculum for something as basic as stop teaching the lie that Christopher Columbus discovered America. They don't even right. have the power to do that. So it's yeah. all a sham. Yeah. <laughs> then, notice, then it says, and trust in oppression and perverseness. Perverseness, what is that talking about? How do we trust in perverseness? Well, I'll, I'll talk about something. As we touched on briefly, the young black man who loves to be a whoremonger, have sex with no responsibility, have babies, and what many of these young black men, some of them, convince the young black woman to have abortions. Now, Watch this. This is a form of perverseness. Watch what I'm about to read. In Ezekiel 23, verse 37, abortion is not new. Killing your babies is not new. Watch this. Ezekiel 23, verse 37, gives you the root cause of abortion. Watch. They, that they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands, and with their idols have they committed adultery. And have caused, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. So here, Ezekiel's revealing to us that the root cause of killing your children is a adultery, followed by idolatry, which is worship of other gods. Okay, this is what this is a form of perversity, because we want to have sex, but we don't 
what the responsibility of being a parent and being a, a spouse. We don't want those two things, spouse and parenting. No, we don't want that. So that falls under the perverseness we have trusted in. Give out condoms. I met a young lady in Ghana who worked for Planned Parenthood, and her job was to convince young black women to have abortions. I said, sister, don't do that. That is evil. Meanwhile, white women are having octagon babies and sex tuplets and all these other things, but we got to kill ours, you know. I said, this falls under perverseness, evil, the eugenics, um, plan, um, the population control. So now, you said, uh, going back to what, now you said. The tree of life. What is, it, what is the tree of life? What is the tree of life? Okay. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14. It's funny. Because Revelation 22, verse 14. Our brother asked me about the tree of life also. Now watch this. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now the city is making reference to the kingdom of heaven on earth, not up in the sky. But the question is, what is the tree of life? The first thing we've got to acknowledge is that in order to get to the tree of life, we must do the commandments. Okay. What is the tree of life? Now, in the, the Apocrypha, which was removed out of the Bible in the 17, late 1700s, okay, is a book called Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19. I'll read it for you. 19, verse 19. Uh, it says, bear with me, bear with me. Okay. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The tree of life is immortality. That's what it's going with. And in essence, I'll give you another precept, which breaks it down, is Romans, which we all probably can quote, Romans 6, 20, 6 23, where it says, for the wages of sin is death. Here it comes. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the tree of life that the Lord didn't want Adam and Eve to take part of was e immortality. Eternal life. Okay. Uh, which goes back to Matthew 19. Watch this. I know I might be going a, a bit quick, but I know we're short for no. time. No, you're doing good. Matthew 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God, meaning the Father, Yah. Uh, mm -hmm. But if thou wilt enter into life, meaning eternal life, the tree of life, keep the commandments. That has always the been the message of Always. Mm -hmm. But we've gotten lost under the oppressive state of religions. Where they just say, sinner's prayer and you'll be saying, that's a lie, the sinner's prayer. <laughs> we mm -hmm. must do what is written. <laughs> now your last question, sister, what was it? Uh, when it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added. Oh, what is the kingdom yes. of God that we are to seek? Yes. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a precept to, to help us understand that. It's in the book of Haggai. And I, that's a small book. I'm, tr I'm having trouble finding it. Oh, here we go. Haggai. Chapter 1. Let me see. Uh, I'll start at verse 2. This is what it means. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Haggai chapter 1, verse 2. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say... The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much, and bring in little. You eat, and ye have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So what was happening, you had our forefathers putting their personal life ahead of God's word, God's commandments. We, we made God secondary and third in our life. 
and our personal life was first. So therefore, we earned wages to put them in a bag of holes. You know what it's like to work and work and never have enough. That's what he's saying. That's what Christ was saying to us in the description that you had paraphrased, had quoted, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Meaning, if we make sure that God's word is first in our lives, that doesn't mean we're going to neglect our families, because the Bible is about family. That doesn't mean you're going to neglect your people, because the Bible is about the nation of Israel, which is our people. We must put things all in their proper perspective, but when we have a covetous mind, and we put self first, like I always say, we put economics first in our lives, okay? We always mm -hmm. tend to put economics ahead of the Word of God, like Carter G. Woodson says, like uh, Amos Wilson says, Claude Anderson, these great black, uh, uh, great black thinkers. We always put uh, economics first, that's like putting the cart ahead of the horse. You know the expression, right? Yes, absolutely. And we always fail that way. We've always failed from the time of Black Wall Street when they bombed us in Oklahoma and North Carolina and South Carolina. Okay? So we must return and put the Lord first. What does that mean? Acknowledge our identity as Israel. Acknowledge his commandments. Acknowledge the Messiah of Israel. Those principles must come first. Now comes me and you. Okay, now we, gotta, now we can put things in order in their proper perspective, like it says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, about the order of divinity. Uh, uh, you know, basically it goes back to what you said earlier. We came here to repent of our sins, and then we were to go home to Israel, and, and, and that, that's where God will help us to build our nation under God, not here in America. I, I really right. like that. You know, I've never heard that. And when, you know, when uh, with the first, first of February, mm. the, uh, the president, President Trump, had a meeting with, and one of these black ministers out of Ohio showed up, and he started talking about, when he started showboating, you know, more than anything. Mm. But it reminded me that that is what we've been given by these ministers, by these pastors, that they have, they have been plain. They have not put God first. They have not put the people first. They have put themselves and their families first. And that's a big part of why people don't know the scripture as you're laying it out. Because you're, exactly. you, it's just very clear that we have to be in obedience to God, our maker, our creator. And that, that just makes sense. I mean, if I make a robot, I want that robot to do what I tell it to do. Not what exactly. somebody else comes and leaves it off to do. We have another caller yeah. with a question or comment. And I'm going to open up the line for that person. Yes, good morning. Good morning to the caller. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you say yes? Yes. What is your question or comment? I can hear you. All uh, right. Yes, this is Akufi. Um, you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, as long as we live in America, we're always going to have this issue. Um, I, when I came up in, as a Baptist coming up in, in, mm -hmm. in church, I had Christ in me, so I had to connect that spirit in me as a child. So we all have a child, we all have a spirit in us at birth. And church confuses us. So uh, when I went through all of that you know, with, with the Christian religion, they end up in Africa with the comedic science. Now I know that I'm not supposed to be here in this country. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be building over in my home, which is true. So, uh, it, it, but we still fight to build here in this country to have a uh, platform to leave. You know, we, we just don't want to, we, 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 when we come here to pray and, and, and get rid of our sins, we want to still have a, a, a platform to build in America to leave uh, for other countries. Do you agree with that? That was my question to you because you don't, you don't, you don't want to just put your hands down because all, all this we're fighting for, all this justice, all this economic justice we're fighting for, you just don't want to just let it go. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? 
us trying to meet with Trump or us trying to do things. We just don't want to let that go. We know we need some prosperity here in America so we're able to get away from America to, to travel and do our thing. That's what, that's what it's really all about. Uh, if we don't get there, we're just, you know, slaves in this country. I understand it. What do you think about that, sir? Uh, yes. Um, when we read Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, this is what I want everyone to pay attention to. Uh, we do have to deal uh, with economics to a level, to a point in other countries. I agree, 100%. Zephaniah 3 and 8, this is what the Lord says. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured in the fire of my jealousy. Now, uh, what we have to do, the Lord said for us to wait ye upon him. That doesn't mean keep your hands down, don't do nothing. But we cannot uh, force the prophecies for this, like, because he just said destruction is going to come, but we can't force it. It's going to come in its proper time. Now, regarding, like, we were in Ghana for some time, for two weeks, and what we've come to realize, traveling, uh, we were in, we taught in, uh, we did a lesson in Liberia, Sierra Leone, America, listen to what I'm about to say, America, Babylon the Great, has their hand in every country. America, if you go to the United States trade, go to foreign aid, the U.S. Gov, U.S. Gov, U.S. Dot gov foreign trade, America gives millions of dollars every year, annually, to every country. And you know the expression, whoever pays the piper plays the tune. So there's really no place where can, we can escape America's influence. Even when we were in Ghana, America was there. Liberia, America's there. Okay, Jamaica, America is there. Or one of our European allies. But yes. We must do those things like it says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Watch this about pro being prosperous. Um, oh, you know what's funny? What's funny? You hear they talking about, uh, uh, what's that Obama thing the, with, the, with the health? What is that called? Obama, they call it Obamacare. The Obamacare. And you got these, Obama mm -hmm. Right. These congressmen arguing about what to do with it. Do you know that once you become a senator or you're in, in Congress, you have free health care for the rest of your life? Free health care. <laughs> but they're arguing what to do with the people. They should pay this. They shouldn't pay that. Pay this. Pay this amount. It's all laughable. It's a joke, you know. So, Joshua 1, verse 8. Joshua, if I can just find it real quick. Joshua 1 and 8. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It reads, uh, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. And that's what we all want. We want to be prosperous and have good success, but there is a road map to get there. And it starts by applying God's laws to our life, and this is what we keep ignoring. We don't want to do it. We have another way, another path, and this is why we keep failing. No matter if we go to Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Demona, Israel. Our people that went to Demona, Israel, guess what they had to do? They had to rely on the Israeli government for something like dental care, health care. We will still be under this man because it was a curse. The Lord said in Deuteronomy 28, 48, you shall serve your enemies for the want of all things. That's we can't break that until Messiah breaks that off us. That means America must go, Britain must go, the land of Israel must be blown to hell and back. <laughs> Iran must go, Saudi Arabia must go. When I say go, I mean those their governments must be demolished. And the only one that can do that is Messiah, because they're mm -hmm. all uh, uh, against us. All these nations are against us, all of them, not just the white man, I'm talking about all of them. Yes, I understand what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying, and I hope the listeners understand that. And I want to remind our listeners that everything that is being said is being recorded and will be in our archives. So you can go back and you can re-listen and reinforce yourself with this information, with this, these truths, and you can lead your friends, your comrades, and your, your family members 
and listen in also. And we're going to have the bishop back for sure because what he is teaching us is edification for our souls. And I noticed on your website that this, you have so many teachings. I mean, you're just spreading such good knowledge. I understand you have a lot of schools, all over, that you set up a lot of schools, your community has, and that that has been a blessing. So tell me this. When you set up your school, what is the foundation of your teaching? Like, how do you incorporate what you're telling us into your educational curriculum? Well, the curriculum is biblical, first and foremost. Most of the schools are grassroots. Grass, and when I say grassroots, many people think because we have so many schools that we're doing very, very well. No, no, we're still grassroots. We put our pennies together. We put our little monies together, get things going. And the women are a great aid to us. And the sisters teach the moral laws to the children, civil laws to the children, ceremonial laws. That is the foundation. And from there, we, we homeschool the children, many of them, not all of them yet, but many of them are homeschooled. And they teach them the fundamentals that they're required. Uh, then we go on to other things that the Bible covers, because the Bible covers a, a litany of things, a whole plethora of information. It is a wealth of information. We mm -hmm. just have to read it. I totally agree. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. Do you have an upcoming speaking engagement or a conference call or anything like that that my listeners might be able to tune in to more of what you're saying? Yes. Um, Sunday... At 10 a.m., I'll be on Belgium Radio. Um, oh, boy, what is I'll put it on Facebook. If you go to Israel Unite, United in Christ Facebook, I'll put it up there. I have a Belgium okay. radio show at then a Jamaican radio show at uh, 5 p.m., <coughs> and it's going to be very informative for our people. That's this Sunday. <coughs> this Sunday. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you oh. so much. We have live you classes every... Go ahead. Uh, we have live classes seven days a week. If you go to Periscope, uh, we have live classes every Saturday um, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, be mm. on. Uh, stay tuned for that. We're going to discuss the medical industry tomorrow. I mean, Saturday, the Sabbath. The medical now, when industry... you say go to Periscope, are you saying Google Periscope? Uh, how do you go there? Yeah, Periscope, it's an app. Uh, when you go to Google, I guess, many of yourself, you can download Periscope, and if you type okay. in Israel United in Christ, we'll pop up. And okay. at 5 p.m. Saturday, you'll see a live class from us. Great. Great, great, great. Okay. All right, well, and let me have your closing remarks, and uh, we, we're going to close out at 8.50 in two minutes, so what would you like to leave us with? Hey, well, for more information, visit our website at www.israelunite.org. And remember, uh, Christ said, blessed is he or she <laughs> that is not offended in me. Many of you are new to the Bible, and some things may take you off guard and might offend you at first. Like the LGBT community may not like the fact that we have to be um, dealing with the opposite sex. But don't take offense at it. Just listen. Continue to listen. Let your mind be absorbed with the Word of God. This is why Christ said we must be born again, meaning our thoughts must change to the thoughts of God. We've been indoctrinated having the white man's thoughts too long. So when we hear the Bible, it's very strange to us, and sometimes we get offended. Don't get offended. Just take a deep breath. Bear with us and listen and get your mind marinated with the Lord. <laughs> That oh, that's wonderful. Yes, it's important to not allow uh, things that are different to offend you mm. or things that you disagree with to offend you, but to right. listen. You don't have to digest everything that you hear. You can ponder it and, and come to a conclusion as to whether or not this is a value to you or not a value. But when you get offensive, then you're blocking the information altogether. And that's, that's like a, ch that's a childish thing. So I want to thank yeah. you from the bottom of my heart for sharing what you have to do. Like I said, it's an edification to my soul and my spirit, and I'm sure to my listeners. 
God bless you, and may you continue to prosper and spread this mighty word. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.